We are reading from Paul's letter to his friends over in the church at Ephesus. Uh, these verses 15 to 23, we often think of them as taking the form of a prayer. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which you have been called. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Uh, this morning, we travel down to Enterprise, Alabama, to look into a story of continual thanks. In 1915, the cotton ball weevil snuck into Coffee County, Alabama. By 1916, entire cotton fields were destroyed by the little weevils. Just like Japanese beetles or bagworms, the boll weevil was a devastating pest. A local businessman, H. M. Sessions was acquainted with George Washington Carver's work on the humble peanut. Sessions talked one cotton farmer into planting peanuts for one year. Watch out. The boll weevils will starve on peanuts while they are looking for cotton. By 1918, Coffee County Agriculture believed in a crop rotation between peanuts and cotton. The boll weevil problem was solved. In 1919, the town of Enterprise put up a memorial statue to thank the boll weevil and profound appreciation of the boll weevil and what it has done as the herald of prosperity. Visitors to the corner of College and Main Streets can see the monument to this day. It is a sign of the farmer's perpetual gratitude. The Apostle Paul has a sign of perpetual gratitude in his letter to the Ephesians. Paul is talking about more than peanuts or cotton. He is talking about Jesus Christ. He is grateful for the way Christ has been planted in the lives of these Christians. While Paul is writing to the Ephesians, he has perpetual things on his mind. Paul is sitting in jail. In chapter 3 and 4, Paul talks about being a prisoner for the Lord. He is very thankful that his Christian friends are holding on to Jesus Christ with a firm faith. He does not cease to give thanks for them as he learns they are not ceasing in their love uh, for Christ. This is doing Paul's lonely heart a lot of good. Each time Paul was put in prison for preaching Christ, there would be a real concern that he might never get out of jail. Back in those days, they did not have the same rules of habeas corpus. An innocent person might sit in jail for a long time if the local governor chose to ignore the prisoner. If Paul were convicted of some crime against Rome, he might be executed. Paul had a lot of time to think about how much time he had left. With the time he had, Paul wanted to get letters out to the churches so that Christ might be perpetuated in them. Paul is giving thanks in the Ephesian letter because he gets the feeling that their faith has strong roots. Paul wants Christ to live in their hearts. The good reports that he's receiving in jail cause him to give thanks. Paul has to praise them for their faith. There is also an element of handing off in Paul's letter. Paul is handing off all that he has learned about Christ and his ministry. Paul wants to get the new traditions of Jesus Christ on paper. Paul's desire to hand off the traditions reminds me of that scene in Star Wars where Obi-Wan Kenobi bowed, bows out in the presence of Luke Skywalker. It is the sword fight with Darth Vader. Obi-Wan uses his lightsaber with great skill to fend off the blows from Lord Vader. Then there is that moment where Luke, Leia, and Han Solo all see Obi-Wan fighting Vader. 
Obi-Wan looks back at the next generation with a kind of knowing look. Obi-Wan drops his guard and allows Darth Vader to strike him with the lightsaber. We see Obi-Wan's robe drop to the ground, presumably dead. The expression on Obi-Wan's face is the look that says, take over, it is your turn. I see you taking over with the force. The force will live. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, there's the ring of it is your turn. I see you taking over with Jesus Christ. I see the future of Christ in you. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. As Paul is handing off the teachings to Ephesus, there are two things that he wants them to hold fast. He wants them to understand that Christ lives, he is risen. Paul expresses this when he talks about Jesus sitting at God's right hand. Outside of baseball, the importance of the right and left hand has never been greater. When we hear that Jesus is sitting on God's right hand, this tells us that Jesus is God's right hand man. Jesus is God's number one go-to. If Jesus is good enough to be God's right hand man, then Jesus is certainly good enough to be our right hand man. Paul also wants the early church to keep learning about Christ. He prays that they will have a spirit of revelation. Revelation is a fascinating word. When we first look at revelation in Greek, we see the word apocalypse. When we hear apocalypse, we might think of fire and brimstone, things of judgment and hard times. And there is that side of revelation. But there's also the revealing side of revelation. The Greek words for apocalypseos are apo and calypto. Apo means away from. Calypto means from cover or uncover. Apocalypse means to take away the cover. Apocalypse also means to discover. This is the positive side of apocalypse, of revelation. Revelation is also about discovery. Ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau named his research ship Calypso, that is, the discovery in English. As Paul is giving unstoppable thanks for the Ephesians, he is also encouraging their unstoppable discovery of Jesus Christ. Paul is saying, keep it up. Keep looking, keep learning, keep believing. Paul gives unstoppable thanks for their unstoppable curiosity for Jesus Christ. It won't be long, for the unstoppable will become the eternal. Amen.